Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're focusing on how the speed of your meals can shape everything from appetite control to metabolic health. Research shows that simply extending the time you spend chewing and biting can meaningfully reduce overeating. So let's unpack what that means. Thanks, Ethan. Most people underestimate just how quickly they finish a plate. When you eat in 20 minutes or less, your brain often doesn't receive fullness signals until after the meal ends. That delay encourages excess calories, post-meal fatigue, and long-term weight gain, problems the latest study from Fujita Health University set out to solve. The researchers asked 33 healthy adults to eat identical quarter-slice pizzas while listening to metronomes set at 40, 80, or 160 beats per minute, plus a control with no rhythm. They tracked total meal length, number of chews, and number of bites to pinpoint which behaviors actually draw out a meal. Their core discovery was clear. Longer meal times came from more chews and more bites, not from slowing jaw tempo. In fact, Chewing rhythm is largely hardwired in the brainstem. What changed, instead, was how often participants brought food to their mouths and how thoroughly they broke it down before swallowing. The 40 BPM pace extended meal duration by roughly 47 seconds, about a 30% increase compared to no rhythm. That slower beat added 29 extra chews and nearly five additional bites per slice. It was simple external pacing, yet it powerfully stretched the eating window without conscious effort from participants. Importantly, those extra seconds matter because fullness hormones like cholecystokinin and peptide YY need time to circulate. If you conclude a meal too soon, those hormones can't ramp up before you reach for seconds. Giving them even a minute more can shift your physiology from still hungry to satisfied. Women in the trial showed a stronger jump in bite count at the slow tempo, though both sexes benefited. The authors suspect hormonal or cultural conditioning may make women more responsive to pacing cues. Either way, the takeaway is universal. Slower eating supports appetite regulation across the board. Let's talk mechanics. Your jaw's basic rhythm stays steady, but bite size and chew count are flexible. Smaller bites naturally demand more repetitions before swallowing. That means you can harness biology instead of fighting it. No need to mentally drag out every chew. Simply make each mouthful smaller. Practical strategies start with utensil choice. Swapping a tablespoon for a teaspoon or slicing proteins and produce into smaller pieces creates built-in pauses. Those pauses extend mealtime effortlessly, letting hormonal feedback catch up without calorie counting or strict rules. Whole foods amplify the effect. Crunchy vegetables, Fibrous fruit and shredded grass-fed meats inherently require more mastication. Processed or ultra-soft products disappear rapidly and bypass the chewing reflex, promoting speed eating. So texture, not just nutrient profile, is critical if you want slower, more mindful meals. Another simple habit is setting your fork down between bites. That micro-pause interrupts the automatic reload giving your mouth time to clear and your stomach time to signal fullness. For phone-scrolling multitaskers, this is doubly important because external media can accelerate your pace. If you enjoy background sound, pick music around 40 beats per minute. Instrumental tracks at that tempo mimic the study's metronome without feeling clinical. They cue your nervous system to a slower rhythm, nudging bite frequency downward while keeping the dining experience pleasant. Counting chews can help during retraining. Aim for 20 to 30 per bite on the first few meals. Once you internalize the rhythm, you can stop counting. Your body will naturally settle into a slower cadence while still respecting its built-in jaw tempo. Texture matters here too. Fibrous produce and properly prepared meats invite extended chewing, while milk-soaked cereal or white bread dissolve almost instantly. If you're transitioning your diet, integrate gradually to allow your gut to adjust to higher fiber without discomfort. Let's summarize five key steps. Chew more than you think necessary. Take smaller bites with a smaller utensil. Play slow music. Choose foods that require real chewing. And put your fork down between bites. Each tactic lengthens meal duration and reinforces natural satiety cues. Chewing more does more than curb overeating. It also kickstarts digestive enzymes in saliva, improving nutrient breakdown. 
so slower eating is not merely behavioral. It enhances physiological efficiency from mouth to gut, supporting better energy balance and metabolic health. Listeners often ask whether chewing slower or chewing more is more important. The data indicate chew count and bite count, trump jaw speed. You don't have to move your jaw in slow motion. You just need to increase repetitions and reduce the volume per mouthful. Another frequent question is whether background music truly affects intake. Yes, the study's 40 BPM beat triggered measurable differences without participants realizing they'd changed pace. Sound functions like a metronome for the nervous system, subtly calibrating the eating rhythm. There's curiosity, too, about sex-specific results. Women showed a statistically significant bump in bites at slower tempo, but men displayed the same directional trend. In practice, both gain, so couples can adopt identical strategies and still expect positive outcomes. For those asking how to start today, the simplest gateway is using a teaspoon for at least one daily meal. That single swap builds awareness, stretches bite count, and gives hormones more time to signal satiety, all without apps, timers, or calorie math. Beyond weight control, slower eating benefits, digestion by lowering postprandial glucose spikes, and minimizing bloating. By giving your gut time to release gastric juices and coordinate motility, you reduce the risk of reflux and improve nutrient absorption. Consistency is key. Like any habit, slow eating becomes automatic after repetition. Within two weeks, most people notice their finishing meals feeling satisfied rather than stuffed, with energy levels steadier throughout the afternoon. Before we wrap, remember that lasting change often comes from environment, not willpower. Smaller plates, calming surroundings, and whole food textures nudge behavior more reliably than sheer discipline. Design your meals to encourage slower pacing, and your biology will handle the rest. That's a concise roadmap. Chew thoroughly, pause between bites, and let your body's built-in signals guide portion size. Slower eating isn't a fad. It's a return to the rhythm our digestive systems expect. We hope today's discussion equips you to make simple yet impactful adjustments at your very next meal. Extending eating time by even a minute can align hunger, hormones, and health. Thanks for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Apply these insights, observe how your body responds, and share the experience with someone who rushes through lunch. They may thank you later. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and remember that small, consistent shifts often yield the greatest gains in well-being. Goodbye for now, and keep nourishing your cells one mindful bite at a time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.